Blatt, How to Cheat Death. It was an incredible epoch, the era of high-ranking poets and scientists. How were they able to find the time for such pursuits? His grandfather, Yunus Khan, was an artist, musician and calligrapher. One of his main enemies, the murderer of his father, Mohammed Shaibani, composed poems of mystical content reasonably well, and his cousin, Babur, wrote verse and pieces on history and geography when he could find time between battles and the founding of a new dynasty, the Great Mughals. Another brother, Said, the founder of the Kashgar Khanate, was an artist, singer and bard. They were very literate and were not only engaged in strategic plans of conquest, the seizing of land from their own allies or relatives, they were also engaged in poetry, prose and history. Moreover, the geographical scope is no less striking. It would seem that only now have the troops passed through Sairam in a dusty formation, and it seems that very little time has passed and the Kashgar sun is already gilding the back of his horse. A little further, and he enjoys the coolness of the luxurious Indian palace and writes his story. This work was created in an era of global upheaval. During this period, there were movements from the steppe to Europe, to the countries of the East, to Egypt and to India. It's a straightforward process. To become a first-class historian, you have to make history yourself, in the sense of controlling the destiny of the world. A 16th century recipe. He prepared it well. An unexpected perspective on a famous portrait. Mirza Mohammed Haidar Duglat. How does one create a new state? His mother was descended from Chinggis Khan, from the Mongol Khans. How does one avoid death? The question was a matter of life or death. It was necessary to survive. And how can a warrior become a poet? Babur praised Mirza Haidar Duglat numerous times. The redistribution of global wealth and family secrets, escaping from killers and the making of history. Mohammed Haidar Duglat, How to Cheat Death, Reflections on History, Our Version. Chapter 1, Dynasty of the Uluzbeks. In Kashgar, I was lucky to acquire a manuscript containing the history of the Khoja dynasty. Thus, this book serves as a continuation of Tariq i Rashidi, Tokan Valikhanov, where modernity and the distant past easily converge at a single crossroads, the walls of houses which are no less than 500 years old, a member of the scouts, somewhere on his own scouting mission, Kashgar ladies on electric scooters, mobile phones in their hands. It truly is a place of temporal portals. Thus, time flows here, in a special way. There is no doubt that Kashgar is a very peculiar city. For example, the Chinese live according to China standard time, as in Beijing. It's different in Kashgar though, where they have their own time. Incidentally, it's now 10 p.m., but in Kashgar, it's only 8 p.m., a difference of two hours. Kashgar is a city of trade. For many years, the ancestors of Mohammed Haidar Duglat ruled here but his grandfather was forced to flee with his family due to political intrigue and a palace coup. It's quite understandable that in one of the Kashgar bazaars, Chokan acquired the manuscript that supplemented one of the key works in world history. Tariq i Rashidi is divided into two sections. The first one contains the history of the Khans from Tughluq Timur to Rashid. The second section is written like a memoir, where the author describes his adventures and gives a lot of geographical and ethnographic information. The author himself belonged to the famous Duglat tribe. His ancestors played the same role in Mughalistan as the Chamberlains under the Merovingians. Chokan Valikhanov. Like a Chamberlain under the Merovingians, 
In the era of the medieval French dynasty, this was a very influential dignitary, similar to the rank of a prime minister. He would often overshadow even the monarch himself. The chronicles would record which king reigned alongside which chamberlain during any particular period, and many of them married into the royal family. So Valichanov's comparison is accurate. However, let's not get ahead of ourselves and start from the beginning. It is somehow customary for us to say Dolati, although in foreign literature Mirza Haidar is mentioned everywhere as Duglat. The Duglats are an ancient nomadic tribe and the most numerous in the El de Jus. According to one version of events, the greatest of all the Huns, Attila, was also a Duglat. At the time of Mirza Haidar, and in his own words, this tribe was one of the main and most powerful in Mughalistan. The Duglats live in the Saryagash region, in Shimkent and the surrounding area, even in the Jambul region, and some of them live in the Almaty region. In the second half of the 14th century, the Chagatai Ulus, named after Genghis Khan's second son, was torn apart by unrest and separatist movements. The head of the Duglat tribe, one of the ancestors of Mirza Haidar, decided to disengage from the Ulus and to create a new state, Mughalistan. A descendant of Chagatai, 18-year-old Tughluq Timur was placed upon the throne. They were all descended from Chinggis Khan. One could not claim the throne otherwise. Since that time, the ancestors of Mirza Haidar became chamberlains under the Merovingians. The Ulusbeks, the rulers of the Ulus, were engaged in the actual administration of the state and sometimes became kin to the descendants of Chinggis Khan. The historian's grandfather was the ruler of Mughalistan, Yunus Khan. Mirza Haidar's father was friends with his son, Sultan Mahmud, who was a peaceful man, also not devoid of literary talents, but without special military skills. When my father, Muhammad Hussain, left Kashgar, he entered the service of Sultan Mahmud Khan. They lived in one room. The right half of the Khan's house was at my father's disposal. When the Khan was seated on the throne, my father leaned upon it. And they always did business together. The Khan repeatedly apologized for the fact that because of his marriage, he had to go to the harem and my father would be left alone, which contradicted the duty of friendship. Mirza Mohammed Haidar Duglat. To balance all debts, Sultan Mahmud decided to bring his friend into the family and married him off to his sister. Thus, Duglat's father became the Khan's in-law and received the title of Gurgan. The Khan's headquarters were in Tashkent and the wedding was also celebrated here. A gift for the newlyweds were lands from Samarkand to Khujand. Where was the future historian born? Why was he forced to hide? And how did his father die? Chapter 2 Under the Shadow of Death You ask, how do you leave alone? My companion is my longing for you, and we leave together. Mirza Mohammed Haidar Duglat They say that the doors of this mausoleum used to be musical. When they were opened, the melodic sounds of the changa, a harp-like instrument, were heard. It is believed that the native grandfather of Mirza Haidar, Padishah Babur and Sayyid Khan is buried here. But no burials were found in the hall. An enigmatic, mysterious place. Sheikh Antor, mausoleum of Yunus Khan, a descendant of Chagatai. The famous writer and historian was born in Tashkent, better known as Shash at that time, in 1499. He did not remember his mother, Princess Hubnigar, daughter of Khan Yunus. The boy was only one and a half years old when she passed away. 
His mother was from a dynasty of Chinggisids, Mughal Khans who ruled in the territory of East Turkestan and Southeast Kazakhstan, where present-day Almaty is found. It was a time of rapid and, as a rule, bloody change of power. State borders changed rapidly, campaigns of conquest were ceaseless. The late 15th and early 16th century, the era in which the Kazakh Khanate rose, the Timurid Empire declined, and the period when the irreconcilable struggle between the great-grandchildren of Chagatai and Jochi took place. But relations between the Jochids were also complex. For example, between the Kazakh sultans and Shaibani Khan. The Shaibanids and the other Jochids wanted to be rid of each other forever, so each looked to make alliances with the other. But neither side were able to achieve this, since at the same time they wanted to destroy one another, so to speak. Besides which, enemies and allies changed as quickly as the colors in a kaleidoscope. Many campaigns took place in the southern part of Kazakhstan, that is to say here in Sauran, in Siganak, in Suzak, in Sairan, in Turkestan, Tashkent, even as far as Bukhara. There was conflict, but at the same time, these same cities were the cradle of Islamic civilization. It all began in Turkestan. The Mughal Khan, Sultan Mahmud, captured the city and gave it to his close associate, Muhammad Shaibani, the grandson of that very Abul Qair, the ruler of the nomadic Uzbeks, whom Janibek and Kerey had split from, and, writes Mirza Haidar, the sincere friendship that existed between Sultan Mahmud and the Kazakh Khans quickly gave way to quarrels and skirmishes. Shaibani was their enemy who, with the support of Sultan Mahmud, conquered Samarkand. Yet, when the Mughal Khan, weakened by the war, came to him for help, Shaibani slew both his patron and his children. Duglat's father managed to escape, and thus the years of wandering began. This was a matter of life and death. It was necessary to survive. Shaibani Khan revealed a secret to a friend of my father's. As long as their leaders are alive, the Mughals will not serve us sincerely. The most powerful of them is Mohammed Hussein. Killing him is no different to killing one of the Khans. Tell him to flee whilst he still has legs, and let him not trifle with death. My father then, out of all of his children, took myself and 16 servants, and we fled. I remember these events as though dreams and visions. Mirza Mohammed Haidar Duglat. or rather, nightmares and constant anxieties. The geography of the places to which they fled is vast. The Tajik Mountains, Samarkand, Andijan, then finally to Kabul, to the Padishah Babur. Because Mohammed Haidar Duglat was a cousin of the famous conqueror, the subjugator of India. And the father of Mirza Haidar was, accordingly, the uncle of the Padishah. But this did not prevent him from participating in a conspiracy against his nephew Babur. The latter, having suppressed the rebellion, forgave the restless relative. Of course, a natural competition took place between them, accompanied by all manner of intrigue. Cities and landscapes changed once more, but one thing remained the same. His life was in danger. Shaibani Khan seemed to be toying with Mirza Haidar's father, whom he had vowed to kill, then allowed to escape, then presented gifts to and invited into his service. It was impossible to escape the bloodthirsty sword of fate, however. The assassin sent by Shaibani eventually caught up with him. The Khan ordered the boy, who was not yet 10 years old, to be thrown into the river, but one of his companions smuggled the child away to Babur. Much time has passed in the service of the Padishah, in peace and prosperity. He constantly encouraged me, with gentleness and courtesy, to acquire knowledge. He showed paternal concern for me until his life's end. Mirza Mohammed Haidar Duglat.
Babur assigned teachers to his talented brother, the most progressive of the era, and he kept a close eye on his education. The Padishah himself was an accomplished horseman who ruled the country and was a master of verse. He demanded the same from his younger brother. Mirza Haidar Duglat praised Babur many separate times in his book, and Babur also praised Mirza Haidar Duglat. Now it is said that he has repented and is on the right path to writing, to drawing, to making arrows, arrowheads, and rings for drawing a bow. Both his hands are dexterous. He also has a gift for poetry. A report came to me from him. His style is reasonable. Babur. Now he has repented, writes Babur. Apparently, there were still clashes between the brothers. Mirza Haidar at the time was a teenager, power hungry and ambitious, another of the Padishah's memoirs. After the murder of his father, he was with me for three or four years. He was also on campaigns, despite his young age, under the supervision of his older brothers. Another cousin, Said Khan, found refuge with Babur. Meanwhile, their main enemy, Shebani, was defeated in the war against the Kazakh Khans and then, during an unsuccessful campaign in Afghanistan, was killed in battle. The 16th century Kazakh Khans, Kasim Khan, descendant of Kerei and Janibek, it was they who drove these nomadic Uzbeks of Shebani out of Kazakhstan. They went south and conquered what is now Central Asia. The brothers tried to defeat the Shebanids once and for all, and they even won several victories, but the ultimate revenge was never achieved. And then Mirza Haidar, as Babu writes, asked and was given permission to go with Said Khan to Kashgar. More precisely, he went together with the Khan to conquer it, to found a new state. And at that time, he was only 15 years old. How does one become a Khan's son-in-law? How many sciences did he master? And was he able to conquer Kashgar? Chapter 3. The 15-year-old commander. The phoenix of my mind had not had time to fly the nest, and the years of my life numbered only 15. Although the Khan honored me with the title of Gurgan, due to my youth and immaturity, I was not given the opportunity to perform the duties of this title. However, I made an effort to implement them. Several of my father's comrades have shown noble diligence in the shaping of my life. Therefore, there were 120 people under my command. Mirza Mohammed Haidar Duglat. Here, the work of great-grandfathers has been passed on from generation to generation for at least five centuries. The craftsman's quarter of Kashgar, Gautai. For several centuries, this family have been making ceramics, as shown on this certificate. They are handmade by Umar Jan. Perhaps Mirza Haidar himself bought dishes from this place, or more precisely, his servants. And probably went to this mosque, the largest in China, built in the 15th century. It was already standing when Said Khan and his brother and comrade in arms Mirza Haidar defeated the troops of the local emir, captured Kashgar and the surrounding cities. Thus, a new state appeared on the world map. The Mughal Khanate, otherwise known as the Yarkent Khanate, and its clan Dulatov, ruled this Khanate. The 15-year-old commander was smart and brave. He distinguished himself greatly during the battle for Kashgar. By that time, he and Said Khan became relatives once more. The Khan married Duglat's sister, 
and married his sister to the future historian. And he also began to bear the title of Gurgan, the Khan's in-law. Life in the new kingdom had finally found calm and regularity. Relatively speaking, of course. The leader of the Kyrgyz raided Turkestan and Sairan and brought ruination upon the Muslims. Said Khan, with his Islamic zeal, took these actions as an insult, attacked him, and what had been done to the Muslims, he returned in abundance. He captured him and arrested him, and he remained in captivity for 15 years. Mirza Muhammad Haidar Duglat. Then there were several more military campaigns in the territories of modern Afghanistan, Tibet, and India. And in the intervals between the battles, Duglat again studied a great deal, since Said Khan began to actively invite scientists and other masters of their craft to his side. When he first saw Haidar Duglat, he immediately proclaimed that he was a truly great scientist and a good writer who sang well. I distinguished myself among my peers, becoming the best and most skilled in writing, poetry, drawing and gilding, as well as jewelry, saddlery, making armor, bows and arrows, knives, blankets, building, carpentry, and other crafts. And I became so skillful that the masters of these crafts were not suitable as apprentices. And all of this is thanks to the support of the Khan, Mirza Mohammed Haidar Duglat. And following this, having mastered many sciences, he became a mentor to the son of Said Khan, Rashid. How does one create a just state? How many years did Duglat live in Kashgar? And what changed his fate once more? Epilogue, a prisoner of separation. Life in the Kashgar Khanate. According to Mirza Haidar, this was a time of strict justice and order. For theft of property, severe punishment including execution. The doors in the houses were left unlocked. The peasants simply left their tools in the fields. No one took them. Merchants did not have to worry about their goods either. And all of this was due not only to the Khan, but also to the efforts of Mirza Haidar. If Said Khan admonished anyone, then he smiled before doing so. He was always merciful and generous. He gave so generously that it came to pass that nothing was left in his storerooms. The royal dining room was empty and he ate in harem. In terms of courage, he was unmatched. And I have seen few people who would write poetry with such power and talent. Mirza Mohammed Haidar Duglat. Duglat remained in the service of the Khan for 24 years. 18 of them were spent in the Kashgar Khanate. But nothing lasts forever. During a military campaign to Tibet, Said died at the age of 48 from hypoxia, the so-called altitude sickness. You know, for some reason, the death itself is not recounted. Rashid, a pupil of Mirza Haidar, became the heir to the Khan. Duglat pinned many hopes on him. In fact, the work Tariq i Rashidi is dedicated to him. But no one knows the plan of the master, and the wind of fate changed once more. Whatever place my soul attached itself to, I became a prisoner of separation. Whoever I came into contact with was in a hurry to leave me. Mirza Mohammed Haidar Duglat. And that is another story, one of unfulfilled hopes and betrayal, to be continued. <laughs>